Hello, I am Connor. I am a docent here with the Stevenson House in Edwardsville. Uh, this month we are presenting the house in mourning as the founder of the house, Colonel Benjamin Stevenson, died, in, uh, died October 10th, uh, 1822. So the house is uh, showing us to reflect that. Uh, I will be dispelling uh, historical myths that you might hear at other historic sites. Beginning with the phrase, saved by the bell. Now, according to myth, uh, in these times, our ancestors were very fearful of being buried alive. So, to combat this, something called the escape coffin was invented. The most famous being George Bateson's Belfry in 1859. He was even uh, awarded a knighthood from Queen Victoria herself because of this invention. The only problem is George Bateson never existed. He was never given a knighthood. His belfry never existed. So the way that these escape coffins worked is there would be a string that would run from the surface of, of the ground all the way to the coffin and it would be tied to the corpse's finger. Uh, and attached to this string at the top would be a bell. So if the person in question woke up and they realized that they were buried alive, they could just wiggle their finger and it would alert people at the top that they were still alive. Additionally, it, um, if such a cra uh, contraption were invented, it wouldn't have worked. Um, whoever was buried down there would not have enough oxygen to survive to be dug up. Um, furthermore, there actually were some invented that we know of in, in England, but they were more like cons. They didn't actually work. It was like seeing an advertisement for some fantastical invention in the back of a magazine. All right, so this next one involves these little bottles. These are uh, La Crematory bottles, and um, antique dealers will often sell this to people as tear catchers. The story goes that mourners, whenever they were crying, they would catch their tears right here. And when the bottle was filled up, you would cork it. And once the tears evaporated, that was when your mourning period was over. Now this sounds romantic and it has a little, it has a bit of mystique in it. It's a very good story, but it's just not true. These are perfume bottles. Uh, what's more, they are disposable perfume bottles. So you didn't even keep these. Uh, these have been found all the way back uh, to ancient Greece and there have been many uh, tests done on them. Uh, and every time it's been found that they held perfume, not tears. Um, a couple other things that make this not true is that for one, once you put a cork on it, it can't evaporate. And also, I don't know about you, but I've never known anyone who was mourning and while they were crying, they had the wherewithal to pop out uh, a little tube and go, oh, I gotta catch my tears while I'm crying. So, great story, not true. So another myth that you might have heard is that everyone died young in those days. And certainly if you look at a raw average of, uh, of lifespans back then, uh, it would seem to support that. Uh, however, the reason for this is infant mortality. So uh, back in those days, someone born in 1850 could expect to live 38 to 40 years. However, once they reach the age of 20, they could live 40 more. Once again, that's that principle of uh, infant mortality. Um, in, in truth, people live much longer than we might think they do, um, and it would depend on their their living situation, on uh, their their class status, uh, on pre-existing conditions, any of these things. Um, our first ten presidents. Uh, lived to be in their 70s, 80s, and even one of them, John Adams, lived to be 90. So uh, it really is just a case of infant mortality bringing down the average. In Victorian houses, there are these niches that are often called coffin corners. And the myth goes that 
uh, it was very tough to carry a coffin up and down stairs to carry uh, off someone who is deceased. So these niches were built into the wall to kind of stick the, the, the corner of the coffin in so that they could kind of turn around and keep going. Uh, this is untrue for many reasons. First of all, this house wasn't even built in the Victorian times, so as you can see, we do not even have those. Um, and houses that did had them for purely decorative reasons, you know, put a, uh, a vase in there, put some flowers in there. Uh, in truth, if someone were to die in their bedroom, uh, they could easily just be carried down the steps, just their body, nothing else. So you may have heard that hair receivers like this would be used to make uh, morning jewelry. Now it is true that hair was used to make morning jewelry such as uh, rings, bracelets, or brooches, but that hair would have been cut directly off the deceased person's head uh, and it would have been a lock of hair. It's a brooch, um, but if you can see there's a little almost haystack design. Uh, that right there is the hair. The hair from hair receivers would be brittle, broken, of varying lengths, uh, not good for making jewelry. Uh, the hair from hair receivers would be used to make uh, hair pieces. Now, there have been reports of supernatural activity surrounding the colonel in this house. Uh, namely, that people will see his face in the window of the master bedroom, which is actually where he died. Uh, of mysterious footsteps all throughout the house. Of doors opening on their own. Now, none of our docents have reported anything like this. And these reports are far and few in between. Uh, especially uh, given that there have been so many people that have lived in this house since the Stevensons. So, and additionally, these doors can open on their own, if not closed properly. So while it's interesting and it's a spooky little story, uh, it's really cool, but I can assure you this house is not haunted. Probably. A very common myth that you'll hear in many historic sites is that the leading cause of death for women behind childbirth was catching their petticoat on fire. Now, uh, at face value, this makes sense, and it came from the 1970s when people used polyester clothing, and this polyester clothing even made it to historic sites. But the problem is polyester clothing is very, very flammable. So in the 70s, catching your petticoat on fire a polyester petticoat on fire was very common. So of course, they thought, well, since it happens today, it must happen back then. The only problem is the clothing made back then was made of cotton, linen, and wool. And these are all things that tend to smolder fire rather than catch a flame. These uh, dresses, of course, could catch fire if there was an accelerant on it. So if there was grease on, on it, then it could catch fire then. Uh, the women who lived back in these times weren't stupid. They were raised uh, around working in these kind of conditions, so they knew how to do it and not catch on fire. Uh, sometimes they would wear shorter skirts so that their petticoats weren't closer to the ground, thus closer to the fire. And, um, and additionally, we've had docents today uh, uh, in these times that have scorched their dress and they've never caught on fire. It's just smoldered out a little bit and they were fine. Um, and furthermore, this myth is doubly wrong because childbirth wasn't even the leading cause of death for women. In fact, infection was the leading cause of death for women and that was the leading cause of death for everyone. 